is Mai. I'm very excited to be here. It's a big challenge to go up uh, after Ohad and his amazing research, so I hope uh, I won't bore you, but I do my best. Uh, I'm uh, an MPH graduate here in Ben Gurion and almost an MD graduate. Uh, and today I'll present to you my research with Professor Idan Menashe. Uh, we investigated the association between prenatal maternal thyroid hormones and ASD in the offspring. So a bit about ASD. Uh, as we know, the ASD prevalence in the population continuously increases, uh, and as a result, it is becoming a major public health concern. The increasing prevalence is mostly explained by the rise in global awareness and widening of the diagnostic criteria. With that said, the involvement of other factors, such as environmental factors, cannot be ruled out. And one of these environmental factors is the pregnancy period. The pregnancy is a critical period for brain development, and recent studies have found a wide range of prenatal factors, uh, conditions that are associated with the risk of ASD. <coughs> One important environmental factor uh, is the hormonal axis of the mother during the pregnancy, and more specifically, the thyroid gland hormonal axis, which may adversely affect fetal brain development. So, so we all know what we're talking about. The hormonal axis um, of the thyroid starts uh, with the hypothalamus uh, gland in the brain, which produces and secretes the hormone TRH that goes to the pituitary gland, which secretes uh, TSH, which moves throughout the bloodstream to the thyroid gland, which in turn produces uh, the thyroid hormones, T3 and T4. And how does these hormones move into disease states? So generally we can, uh, divide the thyroid uh, diseases into two. The first is hyperthyroidism, also called overactive thyroid gland, which is a disease in which the thyroid produces too much T4. The, on the other side, we have hypothyroidism, which is also called underactive thyroid gland, a disease in which the thyroid does not produce enough T4. Hypothyroidism can also be subdivided into two conditions, uh, overt and subclinical hypothyroidism. So what don't we know? Uh, numerous studies have demonstrated an association between maternal thyroid dysfunction to behavioral and psychiatric uh, disorders in the offspring, such as ADHD, PDD, and epilepsy. With that said, the association between maternal thyroid dysfunction and the risk of ASD in the offspring is still not fully understood. One recent study, recently conducted in Israel, uh, even suggested that the risk of ASD is not directly driven uh, from the thyroid hormones, but rather from a mediator factor. Many previous studies have researched maternal thyroid problems, not specifically during the pregnancy, but rather during the mother's lifespan, as demonstrated by the methods of defining the mother's ear using ICD-9 records, ICD-9 records, for example. The novelty in our study uh, is based on the method of definition of the thyroid dysfunction. We based it on clinical measurable numbers from blood tests. This allowed us to claim with certainty that mothers in our study were actually defined as ill, were actually suffering from the thyroid dysfunction during the pregnancy. Uh, unlike cases in which mothers are defined as suffering from thyroid dysfunction, as recorded by ICD-9 medical charts, but are actually well balanced during the pregnancy period due to the use of thyroid replacement medication. So we conducted a retrospective cohort study, which was based on two computerized data sets, uh, which were cross-linked. The first database is the database of the Obstetric and Gynecologic Department in Soroka, which supplied us with the information of the prenatal levels of thyroid hormones and other clinical characteristics of the mothers. Uh, the second database is the Azriele National Center for Autism and Neurodevelopment Research, which gave us the data about the ASD diagnosis in the offsprings. The original study population was comprised of approximately 70,000 uh, patients, and it was narrowed by excluding mothers who did not perform any thyroid function test during their pregnancy, and then divided uh, to different thyroid disease states and different pregnancy trimesters. Our multivariable analysis was made using Cox regression. Um, 
and to measure the independent variables to perform the analysis in three different levels. It's the last one. Okay. Uh, first, we assess the association of ASD with raw numerical numbers of uh, thyroid hormones. Next, we assess the association of the thyroid disease states, as defined by the ratio between levels of TSH and T4. And finally, we assess the thyroid disease states subdivided by pregnancy trimesters. Okay, let's move on for the results. Um, okay, so when looking at the demographic data of our study population, we found that mothers to children with ASD uh, were older and mostly Jewish. In addition, we found that mostly ch most children in our study were males, which corresponds to the known epidemiological data uh, about the prevalence of ASD. When assessing the relationship between mean levels of TSH, T3, and T4 in its raw numerical form, we didn't find any difference uh, in our data. However, when we transformed this num raw numerical data and turned it into the disease states, we actually discovered significant differences between the groups. We saw that hypothyroidism was more prevalent in mothers to children with ASD. It is also important to note that when inspecting hyperthyroidism, we found very low rates of the disease, less than 1%. When conducting the Cox regression uh, of the association between ASD and the maternal thyroid function, we found a few interesting things. First, we found that the hypothyroidism during the pregnancy was associated with an increased risk of 1.8 to ASD in the offspring. Furthermore, when inspecting subclinical versus overt hypothyroidism, we found that overt hypothyroidism is increasing the risk for ASD more than subclinical hypothyroidism and this finding was consistent throughout the pregnancy. Here we can see a graphic display of the regression results. On the left, we can see that within the ASD group, the highest risk is with hypothyroidism, as seen on the green line. On the right figure, we compared the different hypothyroidism states and saw that the highest risk is presented with overt hypothyroidism, and followed with the subclinical hypothyroidism. Okay. So as I said, we found an association between hypothyroidism and hyperthyroidism as defined by blood tests during the gestation to ASD risk. But because uh, most similar studies have done their thyroid status definitions based on ICD-9 medical charts, uh, we wanted to research that part as well. So in this slide, you can see that even within our own database, uh, there was very little overlap between thyroid status as defined by blood tests and by medical charts. Um, and I think this data marks the importance of our findings that, and the need to check uh, thyroid hormones during the pregnancy itself. Um, furthermore, we even ran our multivariable Cox regression with the exposure variable being thyroid status based on ICD-9 definitions. And as you can see, we actually did not find uh, any clinical significant uh, risk for ASD, which is in complete contrast to our findings of thyroid status based on blood tests. Okay. Um, to conclude, we found that maternal thyroid dysfunction and specifically hypothyroidism was a risk factor for ASD. And when inspecting the sub-analysis in each trimester on its own, overt hypothyroidism has shown greater hazard ratio than subclinical hypothyroidism consistently. Um, those results suggest two main conclusions. The first is that even subclinical hypothyroidism has immense clinical significance to ASD risk factor, uh, and so it should be routinely screened and treated for. And secondly, it is possible that different degrees of thyroid hormone dysfunction as expressed by T4 levels uh, has a, a different effect on the disease severity, since it is below normal values only in overt hypothyroidism that showed higher hazard ratios. Those conclusions uh, lead us to the importance of our study, which lies in a few major points. First, our findings support uh, the need to accurately and consistently identify maternal thyroid dysfunction during the pregnancy. Uh, it encourages more frequent tests during and before the pregnancy. Uh, in addition, knowledge of the existence of such relationship 
can contribute uh, to early diagnosis and treatment by defining newborns who are born to mothers with hypothyroidism in risk groups. Uh, and finally, it is important to note that thyroid diseases are mostly easy to treat. Therefore, there is a great potential here for reducing the prevalence of ASD by identifying and treating the risk, for, uh, the risk factor as early as possible. Thank you. Yeah. Oh, not MRI, I mean uh, ultrasound, like, like the question was, the, the first question, did you use MRI to see the brain in the previous talk? Yeah, we, we used the ultrasound. Oh, the, the MRI of some children, but usually children do MRI during the teenage life. They have a suspicion of some yeah. kind of abnormal development. Yeah, but if you do ultrasound, hopefully it will give you cover underwent ultrasound, so it will break the covenant. We need more decisions. No, I think um, what's interesting in maybe in my lecture and the previous uh, speakers is that we spoke on different sides of ASD risk factors. Uh, there were a lot of talk about genetics, and I talked about environmental factors. And obviously, it's a combination of the two and should be researched. Thank you.